A cylinder is one of the strongest three-dimensional geometric forms because anywhere you apply pressure around its curved surface, the stress is the same. The pressure is distributed evenly around its structure. Think of the strength of a castle turret. It's one of the reasons why cylindrical or round houses are strongly advocated by some people. The argument goes that they are quicker to build, use less materials, are more energy efficient and can be cheaper to maintain over time. So the question is, if that's all true, why don't we all live in round houses? Is it because we're just not used to thinking outside of the square? James Davis and his mum Sally live in Waikanae, a seaside town on the Carpety Coast, about 60 kilometres north of Wellington. Where's it gone? Yes! <laughs> Waikanae boasts an enviable outdoor lifestyle and the jewel in the coastal crown, Carpety Island, just offshore. Hey, leave it. Let's go. I was born on the Carpety Coast, so I've been here all my life, 32 years, and I just love living here. Me and my mum, we walk on the beach most mornings. There's, there's so much to do with the ocean. Waikanae is a magical place. I just love it here. I'm different from James. James loves anything with motors. He always takes it to the extreme. I'd rather go surfing or go swimming. So you sure you don't want to come out? No, God, no. No way. <laughs> I've taken her on the jet ski once, and um, she was pretty keen to get off it pretty quickly. You go and get some power. <laughs> Sally works in the building industry, placing apprentices, while James owns and operates not one, but two businesses, sign writing and landscaping. James is always on the move, with a lot of energy and big plans. He just wants to get stuff done. When I decide something, I just start ripping into it. Generally, before you think too hard, because um, if you do that, you kind of get a bit put off. I'm always like just wondering what James is going to come up or what he's going to say to me. Sometimes he just says a couple of little lines, and I think, oh my God, what's, what's going to happen now? What's he going to do? What James is about to do is build a house. True to form, though, he's not doing ordinary. I really want to this house to be a bit different. I just can't bring myself to doing some squares or some putting some boxes together. So I'm not 100% sure yet, but it's, it's going to be something different. Something different is not something Sally necessarily wants to hear. After all, the bank of mum has also invested in the build. Well, I say, do you know how difficult it or how expensive it's going to be to do something a little different. I really get him to talk, talk me through the plan and then we usually go through the um, advantages, disadvantages. Oh, I'll work it out, he says. Yeah. <laughs> By the beginning of 2021, James has worked it out and is building in a new subdivision on steep hills above Waikanae. Feels a little suburban, doesn't it? But wait, look at that wild west coast bush in the background and that stonking view of Kapiti Island. Incredible. Hey, James. G'day, Tom. Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah, welcome to the Kapiti Coast. So this is you? This is me. A bit of a pocket site in this vast landscape. It is a small section. We're going to use as much of it as we possibly can. It's going to be everything we need, nothing yeah. we don't. Shall we go and see it? Come on through. I think I'm in the wrong footwear here, oh, I James. think you are too, mate. There's a bit of mud going on here. Yeah, yeah. so that, the ground's broken. But what for? What are you going to build here? Just over here, we're going to build a two-storey cylinder roundhouse. A roundhouse? Roundhouse. That's a build that comes with challenges. Absolutely. I believe the engineer and the architect have had a bit of a hard time together to, to make, it all, make it all work. So that's not a standard build, a cylinder? Absolutely it, not. That fits well here? It does fit well, yeah. yeah. 
So we're pretty excited to start this. It's something different for me. I've never done anything like this before. And these are my designs that I gave to the architect. Okay. So I feel responsible for not imposing ugliness on the world. So I hope it's oh, going wow. up really good. Yeah, yeah, great, great sentiment there. <laughs> James's roundhouse theme starts with a large garage with slightly bowed walls echoing the main dwelling. For the house itself, the circular concrete slab goes down and prefabricated wooden wall sections and steel portals go up. The house is in fact 12-sided. It's the final cladding that makes it appear round. Entry is through a large open atrium and then into a double-height lobby. To the left, the living areas start with the dining room working round into the large open kitchen, onto the laundry and toilet hidden behind a wall and round to the uniquely shaped lounge with French doors opening out to the deck. Centre stage is the spiral steel staircase. Take this up to the second floor containing a compact sized master bedroom, a second open plan living area, a bathroom and a second bedroom. The roof is also formed from prefabricated wooden sections all slotting into a torsion ring that bears most of the load. The roof is flat with internal drainage to create the tower look James is after, while exterior cladding, all in cedar, rounds the whole house off. So tell me about the budget. I'll be happy if we finish up in 1.2 million. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I had to go and talk to a few friends and um, everyone could have said maybe, maybe you shouldn't do it, maybe you're overcapitalising over for the site. You know, after it's sleeping on it, I said it's, it's either now or never. And how long to build? Um, I was talking to the builder last week and he estimates a 33 week build, which brings us just before Christmas. Which means you'll be building through winter? Yeah, we're going to have to deal with the uh, elements. We're quite high up here in the clouds, so you'll, we definitely get the rain up here. Um, it's just going to be something that the contractors and builders are going to have to deal with on site. However, the biggest cloud hanging over this build is COVID and its impact on supply chains. The supply of all the materials, we really don't know what we are going to be able to get hold of, but we're soon going to find out. I've got to say, $1.2 million is a lot. Even allowing 200,000 for landscaping, that's a cool million for 135 square meters of house. Now, okay, small may be beautiful, but here, it's also very expensive. James's dream house. I mean, this is an unusual and imaginative response to building here on this fantastic site. But I have a question. Is this gonna be a practical house? Has James got the right starting point to spend $1.2 million? At this stage, I have my doubts. While he waits for the necessary council consents to come through, James continues his busy day jobs, running his sign writing and landscaping businesses. Following his entrepreneurial instincts, James took a punt on both, and that's now paying off nicely. OK, so we've got the boat wrap coming in today. Mm -hmm. Our main source of income is the sign companies, but personally, I, I actually enjoy being out in the, in the landscaping yard and the diggers and the trucks. So as soon as I've got the, what I need to get out the way, I'm generally out in the truck doing, doing what I can on the landscaping yard. Um, I left school when I was about 15 or 16. May have got asked to leave, I'm not quite sure there, but I basically got straight into a job with a, with a sign company and started an apprenticeship. After a couple of years with my employer there, I ended up buying the company off him. Very kindly, my mum, she believed in me and she, um, I think at the time, put her house on the line so I could get a loan for the business. And at the same time, I slowly started to build a landscaping business alongside the sign company. We go around the country finding, collecting old bits of timber or plants that, that people were digging out in the gardens for new developments. We'll definitely come in there and save those trees. A bit of scavenging going on, that's for sure. Anything cool with big heavy duty rusty bolts on them or, or anything like that, we, we just love it. So um, we just think it all looks cool. And then, um, and then I tie everything and cap it with a bit of copper or something, you know, just to, just to finish off the touches. Finishing off the roundhouse must seem a distant prospect right now, though. But at least they're finally out of the ground and pouring the concrete slab. 
It is a little nerve-wracking, the shape. This is the most important part, the concrete, because just once this is set, you can't change this. The last thing James needs is an expensive mistake. With COVID disrupting the supply of building materials, the cost is escalating wildly. Everything's gone over budget. Everything from the flooring beams on the second floor to the tiling to the exterior cladding cedar. You know, so some of these are $12,000 more than maybe what we expected. So I think we'll just throw the budget out the door and maybe just a bit of freestyle from here onwards. Freestyle is far too close to freefall for me, and I bet for Sally as well. After all, she's got money in the build and her son's welfare on the line. A bit scary to watch, actually. <laughs> He sort of um, always pushes the boundaries, wants to do something that no one else thinks is a good idea. <laughs> but I've watched him how he does everything. He has a little go and then he thinks about the plan and he's got his own little process. What's the worst that can happen? Let's face it. Most houses are boxes, square, rectangular, orthogonal, all straight lines and simple angles. Round houses, of course, are entirely different. Outliers that stray from the straight and narrow. Now, through history, there have been some great round buildings that take that circular form for very good reason. Shakespeare's Globe Theatre, for instance, the audience sat or stood all the way around the stage. And in fact, Shakespeare wrote many of his plays to be performed in this theatre in the round. Now, fast forward to the 20th century and the Guggenheim in New York, designed by one of the greats, Frank Lloyd Wright. Its circular form enclosing a singular spiralling gallery designed so that you can experience art in an entirely different space to the norm. And looking at the Guggenheim, I'm reminded of something else our tutors told us. Don't design round buildings unless you think you're as good as Frank Lloyd Wright. Now, of course, James Davis is in no way seeking to emulate Frank Lloyd Wright, but I'm not sure his stated desire to build something different tells the whole story. The motivation is something much closer to his heart. And it's here in central Otago, in spectacular Wanaka, hundreds of kilometers south of his home in Waikanae. As it turns out, Unusually shaped houses run in the Davis family. On a Wanaka lifestyle block, there's a home James has a very deep connection to. This is my uncle Mark's house in Wanaka, and uh, this is where we came for the majority of uh, school holidays. So we did, did a lot of cool things here. This is where we learnt to drive, rabbit shoot, um, you know, every, everything. Uncle Mark's house was built in the 1990s after he helped build an octagonal house for a friend elsewhere. In his own house, Mark went for the same idea, largely because it offered 360 degree views. This is a really special place to me, I think, um, without really knowing it's embedded in my subconscious. You know, I'm really inspired by what my uncle's done. I just think it's different and super cool, you know? So I'm gonna do a modern version of the round house. But while wonderful memories of holidays at Uncle Mark's house have provided the inspiration for James, Actually, building a roundhouse is always going to be fraught with difficulty. Not the least of which are some serious engineering challenges. Just as well, then, James has one of his best mates on the job. Initially, um, when he came to me with a roundhouse, I thought, you know, this is going to cost a lot of money. Maybe we should rethink this. Um, but his heart was set on it, and that's the way he wanted to go. Today, James and Hayden have a brand new way to check out the build, a 3D video. Architect Eugene Fari is walking them through for the first time. So this is the entrance of the house. Oh my god. <laughs> With a double height here in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the living room facing west and towards the Cavity Island. Oh my god, that's nice. so sick. And Upstairs, you have the master bedroom as well, looking to the island. Yep. Why can I down below? You've been holding this back from me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been trying to imagine all this Whoa. time. <laughs> We're going to have to make this private somehow because... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of glass. There's, there's, there's a lot of glass, floor to ceiling. And then you have the other living room here. This oh, kind yeah, of wow. Room. It's way cooler than I thought it was going to be, hey? <laughs> Thank you. 
While the only action so far on site has been the concrete pour, in fact, construction of James's house has been going on for several weeks inside the factory belonging to his builder, Dwayne. Hey, James, how are you, mate? Good, good. Here's, here's half your house. Here's one of our external wall panels for your house, for yep. the second floor. The boys are just papering it up and getting it ready to go. And the cedar goes on top of that. And the cedar on the outside skin, which will be done on site yep. with the window installed. The round house is very complicated. It's basically a pizza, so it's a whole lot of segments that go, come together. There's a lot of math behind it, and we have very little tolerance for error. Dwayne's factory is set up to follow a prefabricating system used in Europe for decades. And one ace up his sleeve is German-born builder Ingo True. This technology makes a lot of difference, taking the architect's drawings and generating construction and workshop drawings from them. Transferring measurements from the architect into this means I can see the mistakes before I actually go on site. What we have in here, we build exactly down there. There's been one change, however, and it's something that won't thrill James, who wants a perfectly flat roof. They've got vents going in the roof now. Is anything sticking up? Is it ugly? Yeah, about that high. It's above the house? Above the roof. Oh, yeah. You have to have them. You hardly see them when you look down on them. I mean, they're only about that little mushroom. We can cut it down later. Well, so you have to have enough room for it <laughs> for the air to get out, eh? <laughs> but yeah, we'll keep it as tight as we can. Yeah. The builders are very confident, and that's great to see. But of course, the proof is in the pudding, or the pizza in this case, and if it does all go together perfectly on site. It's a miserable morning in Waikanae, but the mood is upbeat on site. The framing for the ground floor is going up. A big day for James and Sally. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. You can see this, start to gauge the shape. Oh of my it. God, it's fantastic. And look, look at the views. I know. Oh, it's good, eh? It's even good on a bad day. I know. Oh my goodness, it's happening. There you go. Just start slewing to your left. Little lifting on the other side. Quite a few years ago now, um, he wanted to do this design house and this section suited it. And when we were discussing it, I thought, you either do it to this section or not at all. So it's just fantastic that he can do that, what he's always dreamt. The framing goes up as planned and in just a few hours. So the team quickly moves on to the next job, putting the ceiling on the ground floor. Pieces of pizza that all have to fit together perfectly. At the end of a busy day, the tower is on its way upwards and onwards. I'm impressed that it does all fit. There was quite a few components there to um, put together, but I was quietly confident in the guys here, they know what they're doing. We can also clearly see for the first time how much house James is getting for his money. Even though it will eventually be two stories, there's still land left over that a more conventional design would have used. That's simply the deal with roundhouses, and probably why we don't see more of them. While it's great being different, Practical can be another story. James Davis's pride and joy in his roundhouse design is the spiral steel staircase in the middle. James has again kept it local when contracting out the job, but the Waikanae firm that picked it up didn't have much to go on. So Dwayne came to us with this and a height and a diameter, so it's at parameters, really. The hardest bit is the groundwork, working out what you're going to do before you actually start welding things together and fabricating, because it's a lot of work trying to cut it all apart again if it doesn't work. Arvid believes he's got it all working now, but what does the guy who's paying for it think? This is it, looks good, I'm impressed. I don't know what to expect, so, no, I'm real happy. Dwayne just mentioned about something to stop the slipperiness oh, yeah. on the top and, like, the paint scratching and stuff. Yes, before we were going to maybe do a mesh insert or something on, on top. That looked pretty cool, though. Yeah, I think that would look awesome. It's going to look super cool. It feels solid. Sweet ass. Thank you. Right. Tommy the Dalmatian takes his owner for regular spins around the local neighbourhood. 
James can keep a close eye on his build because he lives down the road, but not for much longer. I'm renting this little, beautiful little batch down Waikanae Beach. We're really lucky to have this. My only little issue is I actually have to be out of this before Christmas, so I'm, I'm hoping the builders um, really pull finger as hard as they can and um, hopefully have it ready for me before Christmas, otherwise I'm going to have to be camping somewhere. So the heat's on to finish the build, and Sally's doing what she can to help, including giving James the benefit of her interior design experience. We're not having a boring <laughs> kitchen, white, white, white. So I'm definitely going with the wasabi. So this will be what's going to give it a little bit of difference. OK. One person can't always think of everything, and I think we're a really, really good team. We don't really argue, <laughs> nah, do we? No, nah, I think, no, nah, we drove really well together, and yeah. it just seems to work, doesn't it? Yeah. On site, the scene's set for one of the build's big jobs. The spiral staircase is being craned in and must fit exactly into the space left for it. It's incredibly precise work and the weather's not ideal. Big concern for us is the wind. If the wind gets high, we have to stop. The wind is forecast to strengthen, so the guys have to get cracking. On the other hand, they have to be very careful. Any mistake could be disastrous for James's very expensive set of stairs. I'm really looking forward to them being been bolted to the ground. Yeah. Got it ready. This is probably going to be the sketchiest moment. Yeah, OK. All the hard work has paid off and one major component of the roundhouse is now in place. It's definitely a milestone um, point in the build, and I'm super happy with the finished colour. Like, uh, just that dark, glossy green, exactly what I wanted. But that's not the only job planned for today. Now the staircase is in, the builders can swing upper-level framing into position, and, all going well, that will be followed by the roof itself. But the wind is continuing to strengthen. For safety's sake, the team attached tethering ropes to the panels so they can be steadied from the ground. By tools down, though, all the walls are up and the roundhouse is almost ready for a roof. And James must be ready for a lie down. From experience, he knows he has to look after himself. Knowing from being burnt out from running a business in the past that I, like every day I just fuel myself with, with fruit and good high quality food. I get up nice and early, bed early, and, um, and that's the only way that I found that I can got the energy to better keep going. James is also supported by the team around him. Many, like his engineer Hayden, are also long-time mates. Yeah, no, it's awesome. It's come together really well. Really, really good. It's interesting when you draw something on a bit of uh, paper in 2D, and then all of a sudden it comes to life in 3D, and it's always a bit different when it's your mate's place as well, because he's got a vision, and trying to make that vision work for him is always a uh, bit more of a challenge. But yeah. yeah, no, it's done a really good job. Knowing the weight of this build is not all on her son's shoulders must be reassuring for Sally too. How does it feel as a parent seeing your son, who seems to be able to do everything, including building a house now? You must be proud of him. Yeah, um, yeah you're always proud of your children. Yeah, he's, he's a real action man, isn't he? Yeah. It seems right that the project's moving quickly. So you pay a part in all of that. But uh, James's thing is doing projects, but not necessarily building houses. He tells us it's fine, takes it in his stride. But is that true? He's got some um, very lovely friends. Right. And your friends and what you're surrounded with has an impact. And also stepping back, that you don't know everything. I mean, yes. males think. He'll <laughs> say, yes, I do, Mum. <laughs> but um, they, they've all helped, and um, it's been really good. 
Once the internal framing has gone in on the second floor, the stage is finally set for topping off. Once again, the roof comes in 12 prefabricated sections, pieces of pizza that all have to slot together seamlessly. There's no margin for error, but what it will all come down to is the last section and whether that fits in the remaining gap good. or not. Go. James has got a big job on at work today and can't get here, so Sally's standing in. I'm so excited to see the roof go on because we'll be able to get it all dry inside and they'll be able to get the linings on once the moisture's out of the timber. <laughs> and now, the moment of truth. The last piece of pizza going in. Once again, the prefabricating process has proved its worth. Everything is snugly in place, and the roundhouse has a roof. The window framing has also benefited from the precise prefabrication. Even though there's a lot of glass in the roundhouse, everything fits like a glove. A key part of the roof's engineering design is the torsion ring in the middle. The ring bears a lot of the load with all the roof sections slotting into it. However, on top of the roof, there's an issue. The roofers, here to apply the waterproof sealant, are questioning the surface of the plywood. Supply problems meant that two different grades of plywood had to be used, one sanded and one not. Because of this, the roofers are concerned that the waterproof membrane may not stick perfectly. A tricky problem for builder Ingo to sort out. To put that product on, we need to amend certain things on the roof because supply is not good enough. And uh, so now we need to figure out what we're going to do, whether we're going to send it down. Worst case scenario, we would put another layer on top of it. So obviously, we want to have a warranty. They want to be comfortable with their product to put it on. Work on the roof comes to a sudden and unexpected stop, and James is not happy. Kind of in a hurry to get the roof on, to get the building watertight, because we've got all this ply on the second floor that's delaminating for the amount of water that's coming in. At the moment, every other day, it's just teeming down with rain. Just lying in bed knowing that there's water teeming into your building, it does make you feel a bit anxious, and uh, you just got to try and clear your mind so that you can get some sleep. Ultimately, though, there is no resolution, and the builders and the roofers part company. The roof is wrapped to hopefully minimise any further water damage inside, but the effect on the building schedule will be harder to fix, and it looks like James can kiss goodbye to being in here for Christmas. Work at the roundhouse has been disrupted by delays waterproofing the roof, and the builders have to find a new team of roofers to do the job. James is frustrated, but keeps busy by considering his landscaping options, which, considering he has a landscaping business, are considerable. I was at my mate's house, and he was cutting these up for firewood. I told him to stop. <laughs> and I bring my trailer around straight away and pick them up. But they're so cool, these could be like little, you know, just planks set it in the ground to walk on or anything. Oh, and then, oh, um, power liner, cross arms. Sometimes I'll take, take these off, sometimes I won't, but they'll garden edging, walk past, anything. So I got, got this one the other day when a contractor was digging it out the ground so, and he was gonna put it in the green waste and then luckily I picked up the phone because he said, gotta come here 10 minutes. 
So I whipped down there with my trailer and he dropped it with his big digger on my trailer and I've actually trimmed it back, but it was a couple of metres left and right. I think I was going to do the fence and retaining wall out of these hardwood sleepers and then these sorts of things can end up being steps or well, they can just stick out of the ground and look cool. I've got a good friend who goes around the country and collects vintage um, stuff, so he found me this really cool searchlight off a um, shipwreck that I've got over here. Um, so I'm going to try and uh, find a nice stand for this and put it on a, on a swivel plate so that you'll be able to grab it, turn the light off and do some searching. The search for roofers, though, is not so much fun and takes another month before a new team is found. These roofers use a different sealant for the waterproof membrane, slightly more expensive and at the building company's cost. So James feels like he's got an upgrade. Now the house is finally watertight, the builders can turn their attention to the interior. And that, to me, is where things are going to get really interesting. This is James's house. A fine structure, efficient, simple. But how to make it a home? Now, James has a whole load of orthogonal objects to put into this house. A bed, bedside tables, a kitchen bench. And as you start adding these things into the circle, it becomes tricky, particularly if you add something like a wall. Now, I want to add a sofa, maybe a couple of chairs, but pretty soon, things get very difficult, and the spaces in between that are left over are unusable, weird spaces. Eventually, you might run out of space altogether, unless, of course, you custom make that furniture to fit. Altogether, very difficult. Time for a site visit, then, to check out what's going on inside. But first, what I suspect gives James the landscaper the most pleasure, the garden. I love these. Yeah, they're pretty cool, eh? They've come off a lo local bridge in Oteki. Yeah, they're great. All those little old marks in there, and it gives you the age that, and character that this place hasn't got yet. That's right. We're mixing a little bit of the old with the new, so yeah. it's, uh, it's going to be interesting, yeah. So at the moment, we've got this bare ground. It's construction site classic. You've desecrated the hillside, but you're going to put something special back. That's right. Um, we've got the most beautiful native bush behind us, yeah. so I'm going to put in a big effort to really plant this place out. And so natives? Yeah, we've got a few, few natives um, and qu quite a good range of different, different palm trees and a few lower shrubs, so it's going to be a okay. really nice subtropical um, garden. Inside, the downstairs should be fairly straightforward to fit out, because so much of it is big open plan space. But upstairs may be a different story. And I'm intrigued by the spiral staircase. I'm surprised at the finish. Timber everywhere, and then this green painted steel stair. That's right, it's pretty heavy duty, industrial looking, but um, I think that's what I really like about it. The bedrooms up here are small, and James has left it to the last minute to increase the size of his. They were just putting this wall in the other day and I just caught them and just asked them quickly if they could just make, yeah. drag it out that way, make it a little bigger. Finding this hard to navigate, how do you make this into a room where you fit a rectangular bed? We're going to be placing furniture, I'll just make it up a little bit as I go along. And yeah. Nothing's going to be parallel, No. that's for sure, but there's going to be a bed somewhere here and some, some cool awkward angles and I'm all good with that. It could work, it could be a pain in the neck, I guess it's how you approach Problem. I'm really happy with the way everything's been going, but it could be a flop. It, it's on the edge of working or not working. Let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Yeah, yeah. I just want it to be as um, weird and quirky as it possibly can be, really. There are now only two builders full-time on site. Progress has slowed down. And with Christmas nearly here, James's lease on his rental accommodation will end. And no house been booted out. Booted out. And the house isn't ready. The house isn't ready, but um, Bill is okay with me living in the garage, and to be honest, I quite like to be here. Hang on a minute, roll back. You're gonna live in a garage? Living in a garage, <laughs> I mean, be a bed on the, the floor. The garage, this, this one here around the corner? Yep. 
and um, I've got a barbecue. Okay. <laughs> and a little mini fridge, and, and I should be all sweet. Well, you got the site, Lou. Site, Lou, yeah. yeah. I'm, and... ho I'm hoping they're going to have at least an outdoor shower for me and uh, hopefully a toilet. If you just listen to James, building this house is easy. And we all know that that's not the case. There are very good reasons why James might feel like that. He's built successful businesses. He's been through stress and challenge, and he now knows how to look after himself. He's got a great support network, friends and his mum, his partner in this. But there's one big thing that I think he's underestimated. Turning an unusual geometry into a good building, a successful home, is really, really difficult. I'm not yet convinced that he's going to do that. And, you know, I don't think he is either. It's always a real privilege being able to witness the birth of a new building, the coming to life of a new home. And today I think it's going to be particularly special because of the 50,000 or so new houses built in New Zealand this year, this is in the tiny, tiny minority. A circular home. James. Good, hey Tom. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. Great to see you. You too, mate. Look at this place. What do you reckon? Has a feeling of a sort of holiday hideaway. Yeah, I'll wait till you get inside, have a look, eh? Hey? Come on through. Thank you. Oh, James, look at this. This little space here is beautiful. And then this curved garage as well works yeah, so well, well against the house. Yep. Yeah. Well, once you have a circle house, you can't really have a, have a square garage, so they had to put some sort of angles into it. Beautifully finished, and then the view just through there. <laughs> Pretty cool, eh? Yeah. In architectural terms, this is a monolithic volume, meaning it's all in one piece. A circular sentinel of cedar and glass. But I'm picking it will be the quality of the interior design and finishing that makes this house a home. Now, here we are, the entrance. Yep. Oh, this great space. That's super cool, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Should we go on in? Yeah. James. So what do you reckon? Ah, it's a complete surprise, to be honest. I mean, and the last time I saw this was framing. It was a construction site. But finished, it's a real treat. So where do we go first? Should we start with the kitchen? Let's go and have a look. It's a really impactful kitchen, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah, it's very cool. Set off by the yellow here. Yeah, I love to pop a bit of colour in within the very black kitchen. And what I really love is the transparency here. I mean, there's quite a lot going on. Big spiral in the middle, these great big columns, but you still get to see through. I was a little concerned with slamming a big steel staircase in the middle of the room, but Honestly, there's so much view. It feels generous, and that surprises me. Carefully hidden away from the functional space is a downstairs utility room and toilet. There to be used, but not to distract from the more desirable parts of the house. So as you come through here, the circle opens up again. Doesn't it? There's three great windows. Oh, what a spectacular view. It's an ever-changing piece of artwork for us. There's no TV down here, because why would you want to look at anything else? And two lounges. Yeah. How did you do that? <laughs> two very different spaces. Yeah, here. this is a little bit of a nook that's not seen from the kitchen. So with the fireplace here, we definitely find ourselves here more often than not. There's always a great sense of arrival going up a spiral staircase. There's that view and the lights again and a little glimpse of where we were before. Yeah. And then, oh. <laughs> it's a bit James. different, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Well, I think the word is groovy here. Yeah, I think you got it about right. And actually, those kind of solve this furniture problem, right? Circular building, orthogonal furniture. These modular pieces work really well. They fit and kind of casual. You can move them around. This is the main bedroom here. 
Oh, pretty amazing oh, oh, oh. view, isn't it? Yeah. Get to wake up to this view, it's, it's pretty amazing. These rooms are still small, but because of those endless views in both directions... You don't feel cramped, do you? You don't, you don't. Upstairs, the double-height atrium leaves only enough extra room for a second bedroom and a bathroom. So, with indoor space at such a premium, I'm sure it's been critical for James and Mum Sally to create usable outdoor living space. Hiya. Hi, how are you? Good. Good to see nice you. Nice to see you. Yeah. So, Sally, you said if you're going to build a roundhouse, James, it's got to be on this section. Has it worked out? Are you happy? Yeah, super happy. This section's just perfect. There's nothing straight about it. It's got lots of different angles. You've got all these boulders around here and oh, lovely turf, a hot tub. I can see a shower in the background there. Yes. I thought the inside of the house was enough, but there's so much going yeah. on out here uh, as well. I, I love the outside. We just like to be out here in the garden. Yeah. I've noticed looking around that there are little bits of your character, these eclectic fence posts and old lights and... Anything I can manage to get my hands on that I think looks cool, you know, I'll we'll definitely put it in here. That's also evidence of the love you have for this place, the care. Yeah, it's 100% been a labour of love. We can only spend that many hours on it and have that much energy on it because you love what you're doing. Well, I kind of get the impression this is the first time you've sat down and relaxed in this house. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's been head down working the whole time. Don't often look up, but we, we made it. Made it together? Yeah, absolutely. It's I mean, it's not something that you'd normally take, no. take on with mm. your mum, but mm. she's actually been fantastic and definitely not to be underestimated. We're all super thankful. You can't knock your commitment, James, here. But, Sally, I think you were a little concerned at times that maybe the whole idea about this place, a roundhouse, an unorthodox house, something different, was a little bit scary. It's good to be scared every yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, it's been interesting watching his creativity come out, because originally I thought he didn't have much. <laughs> oh, so it's been a real revelation for you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think he's done a really good job. We had a figure of about 1.2 million at one stage on the project. Where are you now? I think we spend about a million one with the builder. Yeah. And then we probably spend another about 400,000 ourselves. So 1.5 million that you, you can kind of quantify. And then you could probably add another couple of hundred thousand to that. Yeah. Building our own that. retaining walls and obviously all our fences and landscaping and death and yeah. stuff, so. Mm. It's a fair amount of money. It's probably more than you Yeah, well, commercially I, I definitely used up work. all my own money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think on the flip side, you've taken this opportunity to make something for yourself that's bespoke and fully yours and, and you've run with it. So yeah. fair play to you. Thank you. So take the weekend off and then back to work. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Only a couple of days so I need aim, we'll be yeah. back to it. <laughs> we'll start Mum's house next. I think this is a case of architecture imitates life. The energy and commitment that James pours into his businesses has brought him great success. And it's the same story here. Now, conceptually, I have my doubts, particularly about the practicalities of building a house in the round. But this home has surprised me on so many levels. And by using its circular form and being open in the right places, it provides a multitude of volumes and vistas. It's brilliant. James has created a unique, delightful, and perfect house for this stunning location. How do you top that?